the only difference between these two shots and these two shots is simply the distance of the light to our subject. Or to be more precise, the effect that the inverse square law plays on the fall off of light. My name is Lee Dalton and you are very welcome back to Film Resolved, the channel where you can learn filmmaking techniques and how to pull them all together in DaVinci Resolve. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you about the inverse square law and break down these two practical examples of the law in action so you can understand the impact on your lighting. If you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, check the timestamps in the description and see if there's any sections you're already comfortable with so you can skip them and save yourself some time. But with that out of the way, let's jump into it. To begin with, I want to start by making sure we're all on the same page as to what a stop of light is, as this ties into the inverse square law. One stop of light is the doubling or halving of the intensity of light. So if you brighten a light by one stop, it is now twice as bright. And if you dim a light by one stop, it is now half as bright. Now the inverse square law states that a specified physical quantity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source of that physical quantity. So what does that actually mean? Hard cut to the diagram. We have a light shining and we are observing its fall off from a side on point of view. Now let's put a unit of distance to this. This increment of distance is somewhat arbitrary as long as the increment remains the same. We'll keep it simple and use increments of one meter. The equation for calculating the intensity of the light at a distance is one over the distance squared. So let's run the numbers and get the fall off as fractions first. For me personally, this really starts to take shape when we convert the fractions to a percentage. If we look at the percentage lost from one to two meters, we lose a massive 75% of light intensity. Now compare that to the percentage lost from seven meters to eight meters, that's only 0.5% of a loss. And that ultimately sums up the inverse square law. The closer the light, the more aggressive the fall off, and the further the light, the more subtle the fall off. And if that's all you take away from this tutorial, then that is a solid day's work. But there are a few more interesting patterns that emerge from the maths. One way that we measure stops of light is fractions, for example, with ND filters. Sometimes we see these down as just one, two, three, or four stops of ND, but sometimes we see them as 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 1.2 respectively but also sometimes as fractions. So one over two, one over four, one over eight, and one over 16 respectively. And those fractions start to align with our diagram. At two, four, and eight meters, we lose two, four, and six stops of light respectively. And here is the pattern. For every two stops of light to be lost, we must double the distance. Going from one to two meters, a total distance of one meter, lost two stops of light. Then we had to go from two meters to four meters, two more meters for the next two stops of light to be lost. And then it took four more meters to be at a total of eight meters for the next two stops. And this all scales. So if I wanted to lose another two stops of light, I would need to double that eight meter distance again to 16 meters to now have a total of eight stops of light lost. Lastly, for this diagram, everything can be reverse calculated. So say we have a light and it's non-dimmable and we have no ND gel, so we cannot change its brightness. Our light is eight meters from our subject but our subject is one stop underexposed. We can gain back that stop of exposure by either moving the light closer to the subject or vice versa, move the subject closer to the light. But what exactly is that distance to gain back one stop of light? Well, if one over 64 is minus six stops and one over 16 is minus four stops, then one over 32 
is minus five stops, that one stop difference that we need. So the distance is the square root of 32, which equals 5.66 meters. If you want to download and study this diagram, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download it for free from the online store of filmresolve.com. Now, what about in most scenarios where we can actually dim our light source? Why does the distance matter then? And that's where we'll jump into our two examples. In our first setup, only the distance of the light changes. The subject and the background remain in the same position. When the light is moved further away, we increase its brightness to match the exposure on our subject. By isolating the face and looking at our scopes, the peak brightness of our face is 66 IRE in both setups. In shot one, where the light is close to the subject, we are in the aggressive zone of the light's fall off. So by the time the light hits the wall behind our subject, the intensity has fallen off greatly. In shot two, however, where our light is far away from our subject, we are in the subtle zone of the light's fall off. So the exposure from our subject to the wall is much more evenly matched. In fact, in this example, the levels appear even. And this is because what our eye, camera and scopes are seeing is the reflected light. The true intensity of the light actually hitting my face is greater than that of the light on the background. However, the wall absorbs less light than my face and reflects more. So by the time both my face and the wall are done absorbing some of their respective amounts of light that they are receiving, the sum of what they both reflect back to our eyes and to the camera is quite even, which just happens to be a happy accident in this example. Now let's go back to the face again. The difference in fall off is also seen here, especially on our waveform. They both have the same peak brightness, but the second shot has far less deeper shadows because of that more subtle fall off. This is why when lighting a subject, a cinematographer might decide to choose an 8x8 further back than a 4x4 closer up, because that size is relative. Relative to your subject, they will be the same size and therefore will have equal softness. However, the 8x8 will have a more subtle fall off within the same softness. However, the flip side to this is, will that now cast too much light onto your background? Lighting really is all about balance. Now let's look at the second example, which will show the effect of the inverse square law on a subject that is moving through a space. In shot one, the light is close to the subject. So again, the fall off is in the aggressive zone. So as our subject moves closer to the light source, the exposure on their face increases greatly. In shot two, I pushed the light further back and I turned up the intensity to match the exposure on the subject at their first position. Of course, the scene looks entirely different because of the change in the fall off. But what I really want to focus on in this example is the subject's face. Now, as they move closer to the light, the increase of exposure isn't as great. Looking at the waveform, you can see when the light is close and we are in the aggressive fall off zone, we go from a peak brightness of roughly 60 IRE to a little under 84 IRE. When we push the light back and place ourselves in the subtle zone of the fall off, we go from 60 IRE to roughly only 70 IRE. And here is a false color version for good measure. So with that all said and done, I want to be crystal clear that no one is expecting you to show up to set with a measuring tape and a calculator and to start just blasting through equations. Again, the simple key takeaway here is the closer the light, the more aggressive the fall off and the further the light, the more subtle the fall off. Just keep that in mind going forward and enjoy having that next level of control over your lighting. And that's all for today. As always, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered here? Let me know in the comments so I can cover it in the future. 
My name is Lee Dalton. This is Film Resolve. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.